So this shows how you could view the line spectrum for hydrogen. First you need to energize the hydrogen gas, perhaps with heat or electricity. It will release light, passes through a slit, refracted through a prism, and hits a screen, leaving the line spectrum behind. If you have a very hot source of light, giving out all wavelengths of light, then when that passes through the slit and the prism, you'll get a continuous spectrum that shows all wavelengths of light. If we rewind and pop a cold gas between the source and the slit, hydrogen gas in fact, the hydrogen gas will absorb some of that radiation, some of that electromagnetic radiation, leaving you with an absorption spectrum, which is a continuous spectrum with selected wavelengths removed. So why should you care? Well, this setup, not to scale, is quite common. An alien sun is shining alien sunlight through the atmosphere of an alien planet, and that light is reaching Earth. Now with the right equipment, you can check that light that's passed through the alien atmosphere, and you can detect which gases are present. Some people are excited about oxygen. I'm not that excited about oxygen. Oxygen can come from non-biological sources. Some rocks, chemical reactions give off oxygen. There is a gas that has no known natural sources, and that's CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. That absorption spectra would be exciting. So to summarize, a continuous spectrum is from a hot light source giving out all wavelengths. A gas of the right temperature and composition could give off a line or an emission spectrum. And if you combine those two, you're going to get an absorption spectrum. Now, as a point of clarification, I used to wonder when an electron absorbs light, I understand that's why it leaves a gap in the spectrum. But what about when the electron comes back down to that energy level? Doesn't it just release the same light? Ah, oh, it does. But that light goes off in a random direction, so it doesn't kind of fill in the gap in that absorption spectrum. That light is lost. It goes somewhere else. And on a personal note, I've been lucky enough to live through the computer revolution and the internet revolution, and I would love to live long enough for first contact. I think that would be the most exciting thing possible.